Hi, Maureen Farrell here. I'm just going to document the week, what is a typical week um, in the life of a TD, so that people are aware what a normal week looks like. So today is Monday, I'm starting off in my local constituency office on Boher Moor. First thing that I do every mor Monday morning is I have a meeting with the team. So we look at the key issues that you've been raising with us. We look at what the doll schedule looks like for that week. Um, and what I might be speaking on and just different bits and bobs that we kind of organised for the week. Then at 11am I have my clinic, that's by appointment only because of Covid. Then at 3 o'clock today I have my first audit committee, so I'm on the audit committee, the budgetary oversight and the finance committee in the Dáil. So today's my first audit committee and then I have to head up to Dublin and uh, pop into my office in Dublin to grab a few bits so that I can be prepared for tomorrow. So join me and um, see what you think of what we do in a week. So everyone else thinks I'm mad, but I have a whole setup for my tea. So I have a little fridge with milk, I have my kettle, I have my cups, my tea bags and my coffee because I just find I spend all my time here when I'm in Dublin. So I usually come in at about like seven, half seven or eight. So it's nice to be able to make tea when I'm here late at night. Doll Chamber. I'm going to raise the issue of both Rakonamara, Le Leshan Ara, Eamon Ryan, and some Drofwi at Taharhu. I'm just heading into the Doll Chamber to raise the issue of Connemara Roads. This morning, first thing I met with Conor Nagrega about the plans that they have for Budget 2021 regarding the Irish language and Gaeltacht areas. Then I obviously had to prepare for this speech, um, did a number of emails, phone calls, all that kind of thing. Had um, a meeting in terms of finance, and then at lunchtime, I did a radio interview with Radna Beltosa. So I'm going to go into the doll now, I'm going to erase this issue and put it to Eamon Ryan that it is at long last he needs to deal with the issue of Connemara Roads. We'll need to be looking at job creation, we'll need to be looking at capital investment projects and I would urge you to look at the really dangerous condition of Connemara Roads and I'm asking you to intervene in this urgently. The road from Barna to Scrib is a prime example of this, a road which would even have catered for cycle lanes. I also wrote to you last week about the nature of the road Akunalinga which has been sinking and making it absolutely impassable for residents in the area. The people of Connemara have little other alternatives because there's no adequate bus service. The bus from Carrow to Galway is 13 euro, which is the exact same cost as would be for me from Galway City to go to Dublin. So I'd ask you to intervene urgently. Grimagas. It's 7.30 a.m. I've just arrived in the Dáil. Need to get some reading done before my first budget meeting, which is at 9 a.m. First things first, I'm going to go get a cup of coffee um, from the coffee shop across the road because I am wrecked. But here it looks pretty in the morning. We are tired from last night. We were in late till about 10 o'clock. So we're getting a bit of coffee and then we're going to write the next speech for today. Spoke in the Dáil about Brexit and the need for Irish, an Irish unity referendum. We have Michelle O'Neill and the leaders of the pro-Remain uh, parties in the north. It had a bit of an argument with uh, Richard Bruton, didn't I, Killian? Yeah, right, put him in his place. <laughs> um, he had said that the idea of holding an Irish unity referendum was a provocative idea. I totally disagree with that. Uh, so I... Um, Freddie gave it to him about that. But there is a solution to this, a solution which is provided for in the Good Friday Agreement and a solution that I believe we are obligated to consider at this time and this solution is the holding of a referendum on, on Irish unity and I've heard some politicians saying here today that that is provocative but I think that at a time when British politicians have admitted in their parliament that they are willing to break an international agreement by publishing this bill with the people of the North being simply collateral damage to their plan then and the mind boggles at the assertion that that is provocative. I, I'm appealing especially to the government party TDs who um, consider themselves uniting Irelanders to not be part of another government of a long history of Irish governments who once again stand idly by while the liberties of the people of the north are trampled on. It is absolutely now time for Irish unity. One of my meetings was cancelled, so I actually get to have some dinner. So I am forcing Claire to come with me. Are you going to come? Lucky me. So today is Thursday, so I'm heading back home to Marview. Can't wait. Come on, show your English more in your Hanukkah. 
Jamaica or in so air on in the chain with Jamaica we got an excellent um, people on Dal Canter and it's cost much of rupee excellent so today I'm in Inishmore which I'm really lucky it's a really nice day meet with different groups find out what the different issues are so that I can bring that back then to Dal and uh, to Sinn Féin.